class, in this video, we're going to be looking at linear modeling. The learning intention of this video is for us to explore real world applications that involve a linear relationship and for us to interpret, sketch and use linear models for us to make predictions. The first thing I want to talk about is what is linear modeling. Linear modeling simply is using a linear equation so that we could describe real world practical scenarios where you do observe a linear relationships. Some of these examples include, for instance, if you're trying to create an equation that shows you the total cost of like hiring a construction worker. Another example would be to create an equation for us to show the depreciating value of a car over time. Or alternatively, you could also use an equation to describe the growth of a plant that grows at a constant rate. So in this lesson, we will learn how to construct a linear equation, interpret it and use these models so that we can solve problems and make future predictions. So let's talk about how to construct linear models. When we're constructing a linear model or a linear equation, what we want to do is write up an equation that follows this particular format. So in the y equals a plus bx format. Generally, the linear equation should contain two letters, so two variables in this case over here. And generally, you'll also be given two values where one of the values is the constant and the other value is going to be a rate. The constant in this case over here is essentially referring to the y-intercept and this will tell you the initial amount or the initial cost of hiring something. And the other value is the rate, in other words, the gradient. And this tells you the amount or the cost that will change over time. It will be your task for you to identify whether the gradient is going to be increasing or decreasing and you can determine that by reading the problem. And lastly, when you're writing your linear equation, you also need to specify the domain. So this is a new term over here, but essentially all it does is it describes the minimum and maximum x values where you do see a linear relationships. The reason why we need to include the domain is because that a linear relationship between two variables will not always or continuously occur. So over here, I've said when modeling any real life scenario, there is typically going to be a limited domain over which this trend or this relationship will be observed. Let's use an example. So for instance, when plants grow earlier on, they generally grow at a very constant rate at the beginning. However, that growth will start to slow down eventually. And as a result, we need to include a domain to say that the linear growth, where it grows at a constant rate, it will only occur between zero minutes and this certain time over here. And when you're writing the domain, you need to write it in this format over here. So generally your first value, the lowest value is gonna be zero because it typically starts at zero minutes or zero hours. And what you need to do is specify what is going to be the maximum value or the upper limit of which you will observe that linear relationships. And you'll either use the letter X or T depending on what the question gives you. Let's look at an example. So in this example over here, this example talks about a tree growing at a constant rate. And what we want to do is construct a linear model or a linear equation. So in this case over here, I'm going to write H equals to something because we need to write it in this particular form. And the height of the tree is going to be dependent on time in this case. When you're reading the question, what you want to do first is you always want to write down what is your A value? What is your initial value? By reading this example, your initial value is going to be 910. So I'm going to write it like so. The next thing we do is we write down the gradient. So the gradient is going to be 16. And when you write the gradient, remember, it always contains the letter next to it. So in this case, I'm going to write 16t. And the last thing for me to do is identify whether it's going to be a positive or negative gradient. But because this tree is talking about it's growing over time, I'm going to write a plus line in between. The last thing we need to do now is we need to specify the domain. So if you read the question carefully, it says that this tree only grows at a constant rate for the next five years. So as a result, when I write the domain, I'm going to write it as zero, T, and then five, okay, which says that the linear relationship will only occur, occur uh, from zero years to five years. Let's look at another example. So in example two, it's now talking about you've got a swimming pool and now that you've got a leakage. So what you want to do is construct a linear equation that describes this. So again, I'm going to write V equals to something because it has to follow this particular format over here. And the next thing I want to do is specify what is the A value? What is the initial value? The initial value in this case is going to be 10,000. So I'm going to write 10,000 like so. And then I'm going to write the gradient. The gradient is going to be 200t, and because it's talking about a leakage, therefore it's going to have a negative gradient. So I'm going to write a minus sign. 
the only thing that's left for me to do is to include the domain. Now, in this particular question over here, I actually haven't been given what is the maximum value of when I will observe this in relationship. In these types of questions, you actually need to work that out. So if you think about the actual graph of this, okay, notice how you've got a negative gradient over here. So your graph will look something similar to this, and it's going to be your task to find out what is this value over here. In other words, what is the x-intercept? Because it, that's going to be the maximum value of where you'll observe this linear relationships. So to find out your x-intercept, what we do is we substitute v is equal to zero because at that point, that's when the volume is equal to zero. So if I substitute v is equal to zero in, what I want to do now is solve for t. So what I'll do now is I'll subtract both sides by 10,000 and then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 200. And if you do that, you should get an answer of 50. So what that means is it's going to take 50 days for the volume of the swimming pool to reach zero. And now that we've solved for our x-intercept, we just put that back in over here. So therefore, that's going to be our domain. I'd like you to now have a go of writing your own linear equations and including its domain. So have a go for this question and we'll go over the answers. So this question says that the bamboo is initially 80 centimeters tall, so that's our y-intercept. This is our gradient because it grows at a constant rate of 15 centimeters, and it tells us that it will grow at a constant rate for over 10 years. So that's going to be our domain. So if you're writing the equation, it should be h equals to 80 plus 15t in this case, and our domain should be between 0 to 10 years. Have a go with this question. This question is going to be a bit more tricky because you need to actually work out what is your domain. So this question over here is slightly more tricky because they've given you three values technically, but you need to work out what is your initial value and what is your gradient. In this case over here, your initial value is 58 liters. So I'm going to write V equals to 58. And it says that the rate or the gradient is going to be eight liters per minute. So I'm going to write 8T and I'm going to write plus because in this context, you're adding water to the actual water tank. So it increases over time. Now, as I said, we don't know what's going to be the time taken for the, you know, the volume of the water tank to reach full capacity. So you need to work out what that value is. So to find out the time it takes for it to reach full capacity, we substitute V is equal to 170 to solve for T. So what I'll do next is I'll move the 58 over by subtracting both sides by 58. Then I'll divide both sides by 8. And as a result, you should get an answer of 14. So therefore, it takes 14 minutes for it to reach full capacity. And therefore, you just put that back over here. So that's going to be my final answer. The next thing that I want to talk about is how to sketch linear models. When we're sketching linear models, we need to understand that we don't ever have negative values. And the reason why we can't have negative values is because they don't really have any significance or meaning in real world uses. So for instance, you can't have negative time and you can't have negative cost or something. So what that means is when you're graphing your linear equation, there's really no need to use these two sets of axes because these have the negative values associated with them. I'd rather you use this particular Cartesian plane when you're drawing your linear equation, okay? And when you're sketching these linear models, there are three ways of which we could do this. But what I recommend is that whenever you encounter questions or scenarios that you observe a positive relationship, then you're going to be doing it using a table of values. So let me show you what I mean by this. So if you look at the equation of here, notice that you've got a positive gradient. So we know that it's going to have a positive linear relationship. And when you're doing this, I recommend constructing a table of values. And all you need to do is include two values, your initial value, which is generally always going to be zero in this case, and your maximum value of your domain. So in this case, that's going to be 10 in this case. And all we need to do to complete our table of values is essentially substitute those values in. So if I substitute zero in where T is, six times zero is zero, plus five is gonna be five. Do the same thing for 10. So substitute 10 there, six times 10 is gonna be 60, plus five is gonna be 65. And you write them as a pair of coordinates. All you need to do now is simply plot those coordinates onto your graph. And if you do that, just draw a line in between and therefore that's going to be our answer. In contrast, when you've got a negative relationship, so when it goes down like this, then the way that I want you to sketch your graph is by finding out what is your X and Y intercept and then draw a line in between. 
So using this example over here, this is a negative relationship because you've got a negative gradient. And in this case, I already know what my y-intercept is. That's just going to be 21,000 in this case over here. Now, all I need to do now is find out what is my x-intercept. So what is the um, value in this case when it reaches $0? So I'm going to substitute v is equal to 0 to solve for t in this case. And I'll move um, the 21,000 over. And then I'll divide everything by negative 3,000. And in doing so, my answer is going to be 7. So that's going to be my x-intercept. So I'll plot these values on my Cartesian plane and draw a line between. And therefore, that's going to be our answer. It's really important that when you draw this, you don't extend your line at all. Because I said, you can't really have negative um, dollars in this case. You can't have negative costs in this particular context. So this is a very nice summary that shows you what method you should be using depending on the linear relationship observed. So when you've got a positive linear relationship, make sure that you're doing it by completing a table of values. In contrast, when you've got a negative relationship, then the way that I want you to graph it is by finding out your x and y intercept. The last thing that I want to talk about in this video is how do we actually make predictions using our linear model. So when we're trying to make future predictions, all we're simply doing is we're going to be substituting values into the equation and possibly rearranging it to solve for the letter. So for part C, it's asking for us to use the equation to predict the height of the tree after 9 weeks. So all I'm doing is substituting 9 into the equation. So if I substitute it in, 0 0.5 times 9 in this case is going to be equal to 4.5. And if you add it by 11, therefore the height of the tree is going to be 15.5 centimeters after 9 weeks. For part D, this time, I'm going to find out what is my T value, so how long it will take the plant to grow up to 27 centimeters. So I'll substitute our H as 27, and this time around, I'm solving for T, so I'll move the 11 to the other side by minusing 11 to both sides, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.5, and if you do that, then your answer is going to be 32 weeks. What I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to please get further practice by answering questions 1 all the way to question 6 from exercise 6G part 1. This is the end of the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys again in the next one. Bye.